So I want to talk about the future of this brand new format because really it's going to evolve a lot post Darkwing Blast and Magnificent Mavens. Don't you dare skip this intro if you have in the past because we got some brand new music that a subscriber sent to us. Let's dab on into this, shall we? Did you like that freaking intro? I know you did. So smash the ever-living crap out of that subscribe button so we can get to our goal of 1,000 subscribers. Thanks to you and all of you subscribing and your help, we will get there. Be sure to be shouting out the channel. If you if you post videos on a regular basis, be like, go check out AVRLR32. Link, link our channel. Do whatever you can to get the word of the channel out there. I also want to give a shout out to, I believe his name is Navajo. I'm going to leave a link to his channel down in the description. He is the one that made this music for our intro. So that's going to be our new intro music going forward. Uh, like I said, I'm going to have a link to his channel down in the description. Go and subscribe. Go and fucking subscribe. Super cool guy. He has some badass music. Like he's he's gonna be the next EDM star. Like I'm gonna see him at like Bonnaroo and like Oktoberfest and EDC Ultra. Like this this dude's gonna blow up. He's gonna get a glow up with that Yu-Gi-Oh blow up. So go ahead and go and subscribe to his channel. Link in the description. Go go there while you listen to this video. So I want to talk about some cards that you should be picking up to either side deck or main deck going into this brand new format because remember that in this format you know what we have right now is basically the same Yu-Gi-Oh format right well moving forward we're getting Darkwing Blast which is going to have the Bystead now called Beastial or Bystial I'm gonna call them the Beastial mon monsters or maybe even just Beastial I don't know anyway Beastial let's just go with that it's gonna have those cards that are gonna be basically DD Crows specifically Magnamute excuse me, and Druid Worm are essentially DD Crows. If there's a light or dark monster in either player's graveyard and your opponent controls a monster, then you can banish it even from the opponent's grave, special summon it. They have other effects, things like that. Albalos is the coolest one because it looks like a Final Fantasy boss. Um, but we're also getting the new Exchange of the Spirit Mill support in Magnificent Mavens. All of the monsters with that support are Earth Fairy. So Aigido, the Ancient Centuries, and Earth Fairy. Mudora, Keldeo, Kelbeck. The ones that can make you mill and the opponent is both Aigido and Kelbeck. Aigido and Kelbeck both say that whenever they're sent from the hand or uh, field to the grave, mill the top five cards of both players' decks. Aigido says that if exchange of the spirits in your grave, you can make either yourself or your opponent mill five more. Kelbeck says that if exchange of the spirits in your grave, then you can set a trap from your grave to the field so you can set the exchange of the spirit. It's fucking bonkers. And that is going to be the main key of cards that you want to play around going into this format. Um, so number one, if you want to play these new cards, I think that you should be side decking uh, or rather picking up, I should say, Card of Demise. Um, because Card of Demise, you know, if you've got Kelbeck and Aigido in your hand, Card of Demise resolves, you ditch those cards, well, now both players have to mill 10. Yeah, that's insane. That's quicker than even what Runic can do. But let's say you want to play around that. Well, a card that I have for you that you want to pick up is Neko Mane King, as Joey Wheeler says. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care if it's Neko Main King. Joey Wheeler said Neko Mane King, so it's Neko Mane King. So Neko Mane King says that during your opponent's turn, while uh, when this card in your possession is sent to your graveyard by an opponent's card effect, it becomes the end phase of this turn. So if you're milling five cards due to the Kelbeck or the Aigido, then once this gets milled, then it's just like, well, it's your end phase, bro. Like we have to resolve the effects here. But other than that, it's the fucking end phase. And then you get the game back to your turn. The next cards I also want to discuss that, man, we need to have three of these in the TCG, Macrocosmos and Dimensional Fisher. Macro and D Fisher are going to be so damn good if you're able to play these cards going first because it's just going to shut down the tier elements deck and anything else that needs to utilize its graveyard. Even Runic. You know, I've been playing Runic like crazy and testing the deck because I feel like it's going to be one of the better kind of rogue picks moving forward because if I'm going to get milled with Kelbeck and Aigido, which I, I know I will with my dog shit luck, then at least I'm able to mill my Runic spells into the graveyard. Um, and by having Macro and D Fisher and or D Fisher, I should say, on the field, then you're going to be able to lock out the opponent from their grave. They're not going to be getting their tier element effects. Sprites won't be able to go to the grave. Dragon Link won't be able to get their monsters in the grave. Like, it's going to be very, very good moving forward, even though that they're one ofs, basically two ofs, since they both do the same thing. Uh, another card that I want to talk about here 
is Soldering. Soldering says that you can pay 1,000 life points, monsters in the graveyard, as well as monsters that are banished, cannot activate their effects. So they try and mill eye Gita or Kelvic, gets negated. If they want to use anything that's banished, it's negated. It's an absolutely amazing floodgate that's at three, mind you. And it's it's just fantastic. Like they're the I know I keep on bringing up the milling support, but those are going to be the main cards to stop going forward. But now you're probably thinking, well, Avery, I want you to include Bystead, bro. Like, isn't there something that we can use for that? I got you, boo boo pimp. I got you. How about Necro Valley? Necro Valley has had about three thousand different wordings and erratas. Um, but basically, it just says that cards in the graveyard can't be moved to a different place, negate any card effect that would move a card in the graveyard to a different place. So anything that happens in the grave, it just says, screw you. So the bysteads can't banish any monsters out of your graveyard and ruin your chains. Um, you, neither player can banish anything out of their grave. Like just uh, the, the cards are stuck in the grave. Also, it stopped Zombie World in case you care about that because it can't change the monsters to zombies. Because um, I think it also says like it can't change the type or attribute. So Necker Valley is also a really good card. And... You know, you may be thinking that some of these cards are really weird picks, but you have to keep in mind that we're going into a format that many are predicting will be tier zero because we've never had milling support like this in Yu-Gi-Oh! before. And on top of that too, we have really good generic cards like Rainbow Bridge of Salvation that as long as you're willing to play a brick of a uh, Crystal Beast, which you can in tier element, you can just play Emerald Tortoise and then it's an Aqua that you could fuse with then you can search any field spell. Remember, Rainbow Bridge of Salvation says to search any field spell from deck to hand. Mystic Mine, Mystic Plasma Zone, <laughs> Mausoleum of the Emperor. I just wanted to throw in a throwback for throwback's sake. Necro Valley, like any field spell. Ancient City Rainbow Ruins, if you're trying to be cute, which don't play that card from Crystal Beast. That card fucking sucks. <laughs> um, and so, you know... <sighs> That that's it sounds really weird to be playing cards like that in 2022, but that's the format we're in. You know, tier zero formats are good for the reason of they show creativity in the game and they show as well what the biggest problems are in that current format. Now, do I think we're going to get some sort of emergency ban list? No, probably not, especially when we have choices like these to side deck into. And of course, the next card I need to mention, even though this is a bit more of a discussion-based video, not necessarily a top five, but I gotta mention Mystic Mind. Mystic Mind is an all-around stopper. It needs to be banned. It's toxic, all that stuff. I mean, it's it's a perfect way to stop uh, just all of the milling cards. You know, can they still exchange the Spirit You? Yeah, but I mean, both of you are gonna have 15 cards in your grave when that happens, and like, that doesn't really matter because you're just going to end up with 15 cards in your deck. So like unless your win condition gets milled, doesn't really matter per se. So Mystic Mind is of course still going to be absolutely amazing going forward. Um, DD Crow really isn't going to be all that great because the Earth Fairies, Aigido, and Kelbeck are still going to be activating their effects anyway. So there's not really any reason to play that. You could play Call by the Grave, but I mean it's at 1%. Another card that you could also consider picking up is Cross Out Designator because you can just cross out and banish your own Aikido or Kelbeck if you're that concerned about it. I feel like that that's going to be something more for like the mirror match. Um, that's why I think a card like Nekomane King is going to be absolutely amazing because, you know, the opponent may mill your outs off of, you know, their monsters that mill. Meanwhile, they're getting their effects. So if you're thinking Dark Room and Super Pie will work, well, if you mill them, it may not necessarily work. So... Guys, I know that this was more of a discussion video instead of a top five, but I just wanted to kind of have a broad discussion and talk about cards that are kind of in my mind as to what will be good moving forward in this format. Like right now, this is the calm before the storm. Once we hit November, whoo, yeah, things, things are going to pop off. Things are going to absolutely pop off like crazy. Like I'm still trying to figure out whether or not I want to play Royal Decree in Runix because Traps can can really, really screw up my, my day. So, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Was there anything I'm missing that I'm just not thinking of right now? I always make these videos when I'm tired, and I need to start making videos again during the day. Um, but, yeah, guys, thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for us getting so close to 1,000 subscribers, and I will see you in the next video.